Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be continuing the warp space shooter with episode two. So let's roll that introduction and get right into it. <laughs> In the previous episode, we cover our enemy spawner and we gave more control on where and how to spawn our enemies. In this episode, what I want to do is add some juice into our game based off of the player and also allow the player to shoot bullets and destroy our enemies. If you're looking for the full source code to this tutorial as well as the episodes, you can check out the links found in the description below to follow through to my Patreon site. The first thing I want to do is work on my player, so I'm going to open up our object player. I want to make sure that the engine has some particles as we're flying around. Let's go to the crate event and expand this. And I'm going to be using my own particle system, which is just a wrapper built on top of what YoYo Games has given us. I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to instantiate a new object for object particles. I'll store a reference to that inside the particle engine variable, which will allow me to change the particles. For instance, what I can do is I can change the shape to a square, set the speed between random one and two, change the size, color, direction, and depth to have it appear behind my player. The final thing what I want to do is set my engine up and I want to stream two particles every frame. Last but not least, we need to move this particle system with our player. So what we'll do is go into the begin step and in here, what we want to do is access that variable, so particle engine, and we will use a function called set position to set it to the current X and Y position of my player. And then I just want to move it to the left a little bit so that we have the particles happening. Now, when I run my game, you will be able to see the particles happening behind my ship. And when I move up and down, they follow my ship. So the next thing I want to do is actually allow my player to shoot some of these asteroids. Now a lot of this is already set up. If we go to the crate event, you can see that we have a timer reload and then we have a variable can shoot. And we're going to be using these two variables to help us determine whether or not we're able to shoot. We also are listening to our keyboard. So anytime we press the space key, that's going to be the shot for us. Inside the step event, down at the bottom, we have an if statement to check to see if we are pressing the space key. Now let's check to see if we are able to shoot. So we'll say if we can't shoot, so if this is equal to true, then we're going to fire a bullet. The first thing I want to do is I want to take can shoot and set it defaults. And now what I want to do is I want to reset the can shoot variable. What I'll do is I will use an alarm set. I'll set alarm set zero and use the timer reload. Inside that alarm, what we want to do is make sure that can shoot is set back to true. If we go back to the step event, because we're not done shooting here, I need to make sure that I play a sound. And this play sound is a custom script. And if we take a look at it, all we're doing is wrapping up play sound instead of using audio play sound with a bunch of different parameters. The next thing I need to do is instantiate the actual bullet and I'll maximize this. And what we're doing is we are instantiating the bullet at the X and Y location of our player. And then we're just pushing the bullet off to the right. I don't need to set the speed or anything because that is actually being set inside the crate event. You can see that the speed is set to 16. We don't need to worry about the image angle or direction because we are going to be starting at zero. So it's going to travel off to the right. The next thing I want to do in my player is allow a muzzle flash. In the sprites that we downloaded, if we come down here, you can see that the muzzle flash is actually a separate sprite. So to do this, we are going to use kind of what we had before for the shooting, but we're going to transform it into a Boolean so we can either show the flash or not. Again, I'm setting an alarm and I will set the alarm one for four frames. And after four frames, we are going to set this Boolean value back to false. So in the workspace, let's go up, let's go up to our player. We'll open up alarm one, and then you can see that we are resetting it back to false. If we quickly check out the draw event, anytime that that variable is set to true, we're going to draw the flash sprite at the index of zero at our current X and Y position, and then just pushing it over to the right. If I were to run my game right now, what we should see is we should see the engine. And if I hit my space key, we have the firing of the, of the muzzle. We also have the bullets and we have the sound effects. Next, we need to make sure that we can destroy some of these asteroids. So I'll make sure that I clear up my workspace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the object bullet. And in here, you can see that we already have a collision vent whenever the bullet collides with an asteroid. Now, what we need to do is we need to get the instance that it collide with. And because we are using a collision event, we have access to the word other. So what we will say is with the other, we want to run a function called hit. 
So this other is going to refer any instance of the object asteroid that we collide with. So we need to write this particular function inside the asteroid object. In the create event, I'll expand this and we'll go all the way down to the bottom and we will create a new function for hit. Now hit is gonna be responsible for a few things. The first thing we need to deduct our hit points by one. The next thing I wanna do is play a sound and I'll make sure that I play the sound clip called hit. I'll add a comment in here for particles because we will come back for this. And the final thing that we need to be aware of is if our hit points are less or equal to zero, then what do we wanna do? We want to use an instance destroy to remove the actual object from our game. Now coming back to the particles, inside the room initialize, which is actually added to the room, in here you can see that we are creating a object particle hit. This will just sit in our room and we can move it around and then we can burst a particle to show that something was hit. If we take a look at it, you can see that we created a variable called particle. We're instantiating our object's particle, which is our little class. We set the size and the sprite, the life and speed. So this will actually set up a small little hit effect. And then, like I said, we can just move it into position and burst it. So knowing this, we can come back into the object asteroids. Let's go to the crate event. And inside the particles, what we need to do is we need to search our room for that particular object. We can do that using instance find and finding the first element then we are going to store that inside a variable called instance particle we need to make sure that this instance particle does not equal no one meaning that we did find the object particle hit and if we did we have access to that particle variable and then what we can do is we could set the position of that particle to be the x and y location of our asteroid and finally for that particular particle all we want to do is burst and let's burst one particle now if I hit F5, I should load up my game and everything we want it to do as I've been done. If we hit play game, we have our engine effect. I move up and down, it's moving, I can shoot. And whenever these shots hit the asteroid, you can see we have that effect. And after two hits, the asteroid is destroyed. This is an excellent place to end this video and that's pretty much everything done. We can start working on our boss and again, if you're looking for the full source code to this game or the source code to this specific tutorial, check out the links in the description below to find my Patreon site. Thanks for watching. Once again, thank you for watching and supporting this channel. A special shout out to those who took the extra step and showed support on Patreon. Thysite, David, Victor, Timothy, Game Maker Community, Ashby, Mary, Paul, Robert, and Susie. Please leave a like if you like my content and want to see more. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks, I'll see you in the next one.